Welcome back to the Prepare Like a Pro live chat Sunday show. My name is Jack McLean. I am the host. And today I will be announcing our upcoming podcast to drop on Tuesday and Friday, recapping the uh, November month, which was a massive month for us on all things in terms of the draft, uh, our monthly listens. It was our biggest month on the podcast, as well as our December giveaway. So we're going to stream live shortly as we do every week on Sunday uh, for, on Instagram for a Q&A, answer some questions that have been sent through to us either via email, those that are tuned in live, sending through questions or direct message. We answer all our questions uh, every Sunday at usually the 5 p.m. time slot, um, but for this one we're going to do it at 1 o'clock. And um, this is a good opportunity to... Uh, answer any questions or queries that you have, any problems you're having with your athletic development or perhaps your son or daughter is having and you're a parent and you're wanting to help them. Um, so if, if, you're, if you've got any questions or queries and you want a more of a detailed answer uh, that we can't do through a text uh, or over direct message, then this is a great platform. All you need to do is just email us at jackpreparelikeapro.com and we'll answer your question, do our best to answer your question. Uh, on the next Sunday live show. So we've got a few questions re written down and I'll stream on Instagram very shortly. Um, we're going to also do our power tip, which is going to be coming up to Christmas is an off-season period. It's a danger period for a lot of footballers um, where they lose a lot of the work if it's not done well uh, and go into the January, February block where the loads are ramp right up uh, underprepared and are at risk for injury. So we're going to talk about the importance of having a real focus for your athlete development over Christmas, something that's going to motivate you, whether you're wanting to gain size, maintain your body weight or reduce um, body fat, uh, have a clear focus and we'll talk about some tips around those body composition goals uh, to help you with your motivation in that uh, critical period. We'll also talk about uh, our live chat show over the next few weeks. We're going to interview our interns that are working at football clubs around the country, mainly Melbourne and Tasmania at the moment. And we're going to uh, interview them on the podcast, share their journey and their story, uh, and a little bit of an update on the pre-Christmas block that they're doing um, great work at those football clubs. All right, let's dive into it, guys. So firstly, as I mentioned, November was our biggest month. So thank you for everyone listening into the podcast. Your support means a lot. Um, and it was actually an increase of nearly 30% of total listens um, which is incredible. Uh, October was our biggest month uh, and November was 30% higher of total listens than October. So absolutely pumped that the podcast is, is hitting, heading in that direction. Um, it's amazing and, and it's really motivating um, me as well as our um, followers to engage you guys uh, and make sure that this podcast at the end of the day is all about our audience. So any questions or queries or tips that you have to make this podcast better, I'm all open ears, uh, so feel free to give us feedback. Um, but one measure for us is total listens, and it looks like that that's in the in going in the right direction, which is a good thing. Um, in terms of our ambassadors and and athletes that we worked with that got drafted, congratulations um, both to you and the and the football club. So it was Nick Dacos, our Victorian uh, ambassador at the Collingwood, Jacob Van Ruin, um, Perth ambassador, is at Melbourne Football Club. Josh Fay, GWS Giants, uh, who's our Sydney, New South Wales-based ambassador. Cooper Murley, our Adelaide-based ambassador to the Collingwood Football Club. And Paul Curtis, who we worked with, I worked with uh, for a good two-month block uh, leading up to the Combine, thanks to Michael Oakes, uh, who referred us to, to him. Um, and, yeah, we... We, he put in great work. It was awesome to work with Paul. He, he was really eager to work on particularly his 2K time trial. He had great speed coming in, so the 2K was what he identified that he really wanted to focus on. And we put a program in place, uh, and Paul just got to work and was really good at not only putting in the hard yards, but also, more importantly, his commitment to success around improving his sleep habits, nutrition, focusing on um, f trusting the process, not just training hard every day, which can be quite common Obviously, the motivation was really high two months leading into a combine, um, but being able to trust the process and do the easy days well as they're pre prescribed and then also equally push himself and, and uh, push past these perceived limits 
on those hard days. So congratulations, Paul. It was great to work with you, mate, and awesome to see that you're at a great club in North Melbourne living your dream. For the ones that we worked with that didn't get drafted, which is always the case every year, you're going to have a few on that day that, that get drafted and you're celebrating um, their journey for what the, all the hard work they've done over their life. But equally, there's disappointment um, for, for working with those that, that didn't get drafted. But um, all of you have, have had a great, great mindset, great attitude towards it, that your time will come and you, you're going to continue just to put in the hard work and, and consistently stick at it, which is great to see. In terms of how to get make our ambassadors, we've got a few messages recently um, since the guys got drafted. Um, our support now is done, so we, we support those guys during their draft year. Um, we'll bring in new ambassadors um, for the 2022 season. We'll select those few, so one in each state, um, come once the Australian squad is announced. Um, so we'll reach out to you from there. We'll also speak to our current ambassadors and any recommendations they make uh, to pass on the baton. Uh, they still stay very much as part of our um, our, our ambassador's family uh, and our Prepare Like a Pro family. So those ambassadors will still stay within our um, the Prepare Like a Pro brand and will definitely seek their advice on anyone they think that they recommend to to um, yeah, work with us and, and help out. And basically, we just help them out during the year of their draft and be a bit of a soundboard. Any questions or queries they have, um, share their journey on the podcast. Uh, it's just another little bit of support during a year that's pretty critical for them. Most completing year 12, most playing lots of football, uh, doing a bit of work in the gym, on the field. So having an extra um, platform that can help them, guide them through that incredible challenging year. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to, to do that. So if you uh, are interested, we'll, we'll announce uh, and we'll shout out to once we do make the decisions, once the Australian squad is announced. In terms of our upcoming guests uh, on the podcast, we're going to release Gavin Bell on the podcast on Tuesday. He's the head of development uh, at the West Coast Eagles. He's got uh, lots of experience when it comes to coaching footballers, particularly around the development space. He's been at West Coast for a number of years now, seen a lot of success and worked with a lot of their players that are now in their um, senior team and, and at the peak of their careers. Um, Gavin worked with them when they were in their youth, um, just drafted. So it was a great chat around what's important for, for footballers, filtering what's not imp not as important, uh, but really focusing on the key areas of how you play the game um, and what are some things that you need to do to improve your strengths. Uh, he talked about how important it is to focus on your strengths, not get too worried about your, your weaknesses, of course, putting work into those, but ultimately it's your strengths that get you drafted and it's your strengths that allow you to perform well in the AFL and, and why West Coast have brought them in is because of their strengths. So the importance of that, uh, as well as a lot of practical tips for footballers. So if you're a developing footballer or if you're a parent of a developing footballer and you listen to this podcast to help your son or daughter, definitely recommend listening to Gavin's podcast. The YouTube episode will be premiered the night before, so Monday night. If you listen to the podcast in podcast world on a Monday, uh, listen to the YouTube episode that will be released 8 p.m. tonight. And if you um, prefer the audio content, that podcast will be released on Tuesday on all, all the podcast platforms. And then we have the great Gary Baker, who played for the Melbourne Football Club, Footscray, and Sydney on Friday. So the YouTube premiere will be Thursday night at 8 p.m. If you want to watch the six-minute highlight reel to get a bit of a taste, and then the podcast will be released on Friday on all your podcast platforms. Uh, Gary's not only had a great career um, being uh, in, in the leadership squad uh, and, a, and a dominant ruckman for those three clubs, but as well as a successful businessman running restaurants in Tasmania. Uh, so we talked all things football. He watched the Premiership, uh, travelled over to Perth, talked about the Melbourne Football Club and the success they've had recently, as well as all things business, health, uh, and everything that Gary does in terms of community in Tassie. So, yeah, it's an insightful chat. No matter what you're doing in life, definitely recommend listening to that, whether you're an athlete um, or if you're a um, businessman, you'll get something out of the Bulls episode, which will be released on Friday. Our live um, podcast for next week will be, as I mentioned, the next couple of weeks, we're going to spend time interviewing our interns. So we're going to have Jordan Love, 
who's looking after our Caulfield Grammarians Women's Program on Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. So you'll be able to watch that episode on our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. We post lots of um, tips and practical exercises to follow, as well as free running programs. Uh, all our live chats are recorded on the podcast so you can watch them before they're released. Watch them live, as well as the six-minute clips that we edit after they're streamed live. So you can, if you enjoy watching uh, the content as well as listening, then the YouTube channel is the way to go. Um, he's also working with us at Edge Training, which is a high-performance facility looking after uh, everyone who's into their strength and conditioning training. You don't have to be an athlete. Located in Paran, where I work as well. So Jordan's all involved. Um, I was lucky to meet Jordy a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he's an absolute star. So looking forward to catching up with him on the, on the podcast and sharing his story and journey Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. If you have any questions for Jordy or myself before that one, make sure to hit us up on Instagram and we'll, we'll uh, definitely add that into the podcast episode. All right, guys, we'll finish with our power tip after we go live on Instagram and announce the winner and answer a couple of questions that have been sent through us this week. Okay, we are now streaming live on Instagram for our December giveaway as well as answer uh, questions that have been sent through us this week. So we'll start with the questions before we announce the winner. So first question that was sent through was from Rexcellent. What is the best exercise for my 12-year-old son who is 12 years old and quite skinny? Uh, Exercise-wise, I would focus a lot on some mini band work, power band work, uh, body weight work. Um, focusing on his running technique, the basic movement patterns, which are squat, so sitting down to a chair, standing up, uh, push up either on his knees or standing on his uh, on his toes, um, doing any sort of pulling movement. So you can um, have him in an inverted supine position, doing pull ups on, with his hips up on the uh, dining room table to work on his upper back strength any sort of planks, hollow holds, side planks, so isolated core exercises to work on his trunk. Um, but most importantly for the youth, we want to keep it interesting and fun. So involving the football in the drills, play some games in warm-ups uh, and make sure that the sessions the sessions aren't mundane or monotonous, but you're keeping them interesting. So they're, um, yeah, ultimately they're, they're playing the sport because they love it and they're having fun. You don't want to take it too seriously. So that would be my main advice. Um, you can add a little bit of dumbbell load and external load um, and potentially maybe use a dowel stick if you want to prepare them for the barbell lifts later on um, to teach them those patterns. But I wouldn't worry too much about heavy strength training. And then um, some good fundamentals is creating some stiffness in the ankle joint. So some landing mechanics uh, is really, really important to be able to understand to you want to create your brakes first before um, increasing your motor, so to speak. So building sound brakes, doing working on deceleration uh, and landing mechanics are really, really important for uh, youth development. Next question was from Mark Perry. Um, he wrote, I have had all sorts of soft tissue injuries, both calves and hamstring last couple of months uh, during the uh, last 2021 season. I'm trying to get some running in early to prevent from happening next year. Um, he's noticing even now after a little rest, that type of running, the 100 metres and 50 metres sprints, the calves are flaring up. Do I need to be spending this time of year on pure aerobic longer effort training before any sprint work? Uh, he's also doing some strength work, hypertrophy and work in the gym, full body training three times a week. And one session is heavy compound lifts for the others and one's more hypertrophy based. Um, from there, he's also written on that uh, I followed up and said, are you working with a physio? And Mark says that he has got a physio who's actually got AFL experience, worked at the Suns and the Crows, which is amazing. Um, just wanted to ask if he was pu pu putting the cart before the horse by focusing on sprints and high running before getting some miles in the legs with some longer efforts of aer aerobic based. Yeah, so like all rehabilitation, it is he heavily contextual and individualized um, and quite challenging to certainly answer in written form, which hence why I've transferred this answer to um, audio. Uh, and even then without um, speaking to the physio, getting the diagnosis, 
um, it is quite challenging to be able to um, provide uh, specific advice for you, Mark, but I'll do my best to give it a general guide. The fact that you're feeling your calves um, from doing some hard running uh, potentially means maybe we need to work on um, either some of your running technique um, just to get some drills back in as you've had some time off. So potentially your efficiency is a little bit off. Um, so maybe before building the intensity in, you just need to start introducing some drills. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't be uh, apprehensive of the, of the high intensity running. We want to get that work in, particularly in the off season for your hamstrings because you've had a history of hamstring issues. So sprinting will be um, almost like your vaccine against COVID-19. Uh, we want to make sure we're getting quality exposure to sprinting. Um, that will protect you from uh, further hamstring issues or it will be the most likely to be able to prevent you. Obviously, as you're a senior and you've had soft tissue injuries, you're, you're in the unfortunate bucket of you will be at higher risk of, of, of future strains. So we want to make sure that we're sprinting regularly um, and also that we're strengthening you up in the gym. So potentially um, you mentioned hypertrophy and, and um, compound lifts. I wouldn't worry as much about the hypertrophy side of things. I'd be keeping the body weight um, quite keep quite lean and efficient so the load isn't so high on your, on your joints and your tissues. Um, so making sure your body composition, you're looking after your, your, your nutrition uh, in that regard. Um, and you'll notice that with a lot of senior athletes, that the elite athletes all around the world, not just Aussie rules, um, tend to keep themselves quite trim later on their career to extend their career. Um, so I think there's a fair bit in that. Uh, in terms of your strength and conditioning and reconditioning phase, yeah, um, A skips and A drills, like our YouTube channel has got a lot of exercise drills on to improve your running efficiency. So um, check that out for some running mechanics and things that you can do before you um, build up you know, into your running aerobic running sessions. And then in terms of sprint exposure, rather than doing a hard 50 meter effort, um, I'll, I'll regularly do flying sprints um, when reintroducing sprint work. So if you think of a 50 meter um, track, the first 20 or 30 meters, you're just building up gradually to your high speed effort. Let's say it's 85, 90% of max velocity. Once you hit it, you don't hold 80 to 80, 90% like a sprinter would. You just start to come down and decelerate over time. So we're not doing hard axles. We're not holding max velocity for a long period of time. And we're not doing hard decelerations. You're just naturally exposing yourself to it. And then over the weeks, you can start to increase the acceleration phase. So shorten the distance that you're working up to that max velocity, as well as work on your brakes, your deceleration, shorten your deceleration. And then in other drills and other and, and in another setting, increase your, your uh, intensity with your max velocity. So if you hit 85% one week, go to 90% the following week. Um, so yeah, understanding progressive overload. Um, usually we want to, with rehab, we want to introduce one new stressor um, in a session. So if you've hit, um, let's say a 5K running session before, um, you don't want to increase to 7K and do another uh, yeah, another stressor in maybe sprinting at 100% for the first time. So maintain the aerobic session and then your next session is where you might do your speed work. Uh, so you're holding your aerobic development that week and you're focusing more on increasing your intensity that week. Um, hopefully that helps you, mate. Uh, overall, make sure you get strong in the gym. So Nordics, improve your single leg calf capacity. We like to have um, uh, athlete footballers be able to do 30 single leg calf raises. Uh, at controlled tempo, and then Nordic, if you can use a NOR board, um, if over 400 newtons on the NOR board to make sure you've got that eccentric strength to be able to handle the velocities of football. And then, like I said, the most important thing, your vaccine for football will be uh, exposure to above 90% of, of max velocity. Hopefully that helps, Mark, but great question, mate, and feel free to follow up with us if there's any queries around that advice, mate. But Sounds like you're in good hands with with working with a physio that's working a couple of AFL clubs. So, and you, and it sounds like you're driven as well just by purely the detail in your question. So, pretty confident you'll get there, mate, and you'll have a great 22 season. That's it for this week's questions on Instagram. We're now going to announce the winner for this episode. If you're listening to this live and you do have any questions or queries, feel free to message through, and I'll answer them now. But our winner for the giveaway is going to be my PC. Okay, so my PC is going to win. It's a collaborated giveaway for our December giveaway. He has won 
a year's worth of subscription on our online AFL strength and conditioning program, as well as the comprehensive coaching package from Josh Gordon, the kicking consultant. So congratulations, my PC. Uh, you absolutely did everything that was asked in the giveaway. So you're a deserved winner um, by entering in on the day on Friday, as well as posting the Dylan Shield podcast on Saturday. And then this morning, today's podcast was, uh, today's task was to simply enter and comment your premiership selection, which was Port Adelaide Football Club. Massive call there. Sam Walsh for the Brownlow medalist. I, I completely see there's a lot of uh, uh, momentum behind Sam. Everyone seems to be um, getting on the Sam Walsh train and, and and why not? He's an absolute gun. And then Jeremy Finlayson for the Coleman medal, which is quite an interesting one. Um, so to set you up, mate, I'm going to contact you and email you with uh, Josh is prize and my prize so um congratulations mate and well done if you didn't win and you entered this month's giveaway we do it every month so at the end of december we will do over the new year's period we'll do one for the january giveaway uh, and each month we usually collaborate with another afl brand so stay tuned guys all right i'm going to head over i can see lucas you've written in a question what sort of gym equipment should i buy to get stronger at home uh well, I would say dumbbells would be a good start, Lucas. And we've been doing a fair bit of that in our private training, some dumbbell work. Those rings we did on Saturday session, rings can be quite handy, or TRX. Um, so you can strengthen up your body weight as well, pressing, you know, like push-ups, um, any core movements, and then some rows. Um, if you want to spend a little bit more, like if you've got, depending on your budget, if you've got a few thousand to spend and you're setting up the family gym, then getting a squat rack is super handy because then you can do your your presses from there, your squats, your RDLs, all the all the key lifts with the barbell, and that's something that um, you'll be at it. You'll get a lot of use out of for the rest of your career. Um, but typically, with a uh, normal normal size budget, I should say, bands, mini bands, power band, and dumbbells are or a big go-to? Yeah, good question. I think I saw someone else wrote through a question as well. I oh, know that was you again, Lucas. Yeah, so hopefully that helps. And good good question, mate. I'm sure there's a few people that are uh, wondering what they should buy, especially coming up to Christmas. So we're going to head over to now our YouTube channel, and we've got this week's power tip, which is around uh, a topic that I'll be presenting on for our online clients at 2 o'clock in 20 minutes' time. And it's around your get better plan. This week's power tip is on having a body composition goal for Christmas. Like I mentioned earlier in the podcast, uh, it's a danger period for a lot of footballers. They've put in a lot of work over the last month or five weeks at their football club. And then they get around three weeks off over Christmas. It's definitely a time where we want to recharge, reset, and mentally and physically have a, um, a, a bit of a break from the training routine. But at the same time, it, it's a time where more often than not, we can have a few footballers that go into the January block uh, deconditioned and underprepared for what's to come, which is going to be ramping up your loads in January. February is usually the biggest month for a footballer from a trainer loads point of view, and then March you're into practice matches. So you don't really have time to be missing running sessions and your key movements in the gym. It's the best time to be able to keep to your routine. And then just make sure that you're, you've got rest from things like work and school and uni and other, other areas of your life. Um, so, but I find by having a clear focus on are you trying to gain muscle mass at the moment over the Christmas break or are you trying to maintain your body weight or are you trying to reduce, re, you know, reduce fat and body composition? Have a clear focus for your body composition over Christmas because it is the time where we can snack and um, we're on holidays, so we can potentially have food habits start to go out the window. So I find it's the best time of year. Normally, we'll focus on your performance goals, like your 2K time trial, your bench press, your squats, um, and how well you're moving with video analysis. But I find around Christmas is the, is the one time of year I usually recommend focus on your body composition because lifestyle is critical. Uh, and remember, it, your commitment to your football success is what you do outside of the club when no one's looking. So your eat, eating habits, sleeping habits, and how you look after your stress levels. So let's get that part right. Have a clear focus. Write it down. Do you want to gain weight over Christmas? And by that, I mean critical mass, your body armor, muscle mass, not fat. Do you want to maintain 
because uh, you're in a good spot and you want to maintain your weight. So avoiding gaining uh, body fat or reducing muscle, or do you want to reduce your body fat? And my three tips for that, if you want to gain, time under tension is really key. So slow down some of the movements in your gym, particularly the accessory movements like single arms, single leg exercises. Slow down the what we call the eccentric portion of the movement, the stretching phase. So if you think of a squat, when your hips are lowering down to the ground, slow that down, don't rush it. Uh, and that will help elicit a um, muscle hypertrophy building um, phase on your on your muscle, stimulus on your muscle. For those that want to maintain, we want to think about the minimal effective dose. So for some of you, you'll be uh, you'll have the potential, genetic potential of putting on muscle really quickly. So we want to make sure we're, we're doing the opposite of the ones that want to gain. We're, we're not slowing down the movements too much. We're focusing more on how heavy we lift and how explosive we lift in the gym. And you might be reducing some of your volume over the Christmas program. And if you're on our online program, we'll have less volume on those guys because we just want to make sure we're thinking about what is the minimum effective dose. It's more around performance rather than trying to get a uh, adaptation, so to speak, in terms of their body composition. It's more about athlete development. Are they getting stronger, faster, fitter is the pure focus there while maintaining weight. And you'll have some guys that will um, may need to do less work in the gym. They might have one less upper session a week because they are exposed to putting on muscle really, really easily. And you'll have other guys um, that can put on body fat and muscle really, really easily as well. So we want to make sure that we're looking after their lifestyle side of things over Christmas. And then if you want to reduce weight, the importance of going hungry. So if actually feeling hungry. A lot of the times this is something that we, we don't have anymore um, because food is so readily accessible. So feeling hungry, if your goal is to reduce body fat, is a good thing. As long as we're not starving, of course, we need to be fueling our training and that's where support comes in. So if your goal is to reduce weight, um, really recommend either buying an ebook um, from any of the any sports dietitians in Australia um, or working with a sports dietitian. Okay, so um, Jess Benlove has some great ebooks that you can purchase. We've got a discount code as well for our athletes. So if you're interested in that and you're listening to the podcast, let me know. I'll give you the discount code. That could be some good recipes to follow. Otherwise, um, working with a sports dietitian that's got AFL experience would be a recommendation. So you've got that support. Um, but remember that if we are trying to reduce body fat, feeling hungry is a good thing at times, as long as we're not starving yourself. And that's this week's power tip. Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We, um, like always, we've got live episodes. So next Thursday, we'll be catching up with Jordan Love, who's coaching at Edge Training with us, as well as looking after the Prepare Like a Pro Corfield Women's Senior Program for us this year. So super pumped to catch up with Jordy. And then Tuesday, we've got Gavin Love's episode um, that will be released on all the podcast platforms. And then Friday, our episode is with Gary Baker. So I'll see you guys on the next episode. Cheers.